Howdy, folks! Now, you may be asking yourself, who the hell is Dallas Staudenmeyer and why would I want to learn about him? Well... Dallas Staudenmeyer was born in 1845 in Bullock County, Alabama. He enlisted in the Confederate Army during the Civil War, but he was only 15. Though he was tall, he ended up about 6 foot 4 or 5, and decently built, so he didn't look his age, but when his real age was found out, he was sent home. He then re-enlisted, got found out, and sent home, and then re-enlisted again and served out the rest of the war. He ended up being wounded several times and carried two bullets in him for the rest of his life. After the war, he just kind of wandered around he spent a couple of years as a Texas Ranger, probably spent some time in Mexico for one reason or another. What was important was that he became fluent in Spanish and not only learned to be ridiculously good with a gun, but also ambidextrous with his guns. And yes, he carried two. Pew pew! Around the late 1870s, Dallas had become town marshal of Socorro, New Mexico, where he heard from his brother-in-law, Doc Cummings, that El Paso was looking for an outsider to come in and clean up the town. See, once the railroads had moved into El Paso, it became a boom town and rather lawless. It was known as the six-shooter capital. Now, Dallas, he was a decent enough guy when sober and dealing with women, but drunk, well, he could be a problem, and yeah, this becomes important later. So, in 1881, he became the law in El Paso. He was their sixth marshal in eight months, by the way, and his first duty was to get the jail keys from his deputy, who also happened to be the town drunk. When said deputy took too long, Dallas just picked him up upside down and shook him till the keys fell out of his pocket. Yeah. And on April 14th, 1881, three days into his new job, Dallas dealt with what has become known as the four dead in five seconds gunfight. Okay, so a little backstory here. Seeing as El Paso is right near the border with Mexico, a lot of animal wrangling across the border took place. When 75 armed vaqueros, basically Mexican cowboys, came to town looking for two of their men who had been tracking 30 head of cattle someone had stolen from their ranch in Mexico, they met with the county constable, Gus Crimpcow, before heading out and eventually finding the two men's dead bodies not far from a ranch owned by John Hale. Yeah, sorry folks, couldn't find a whole lot of pictures of the people here. The Mexican party, of course, wanted justice, and though they couldn't prove Hale was the culprit, they were pretty sure. Now, the Americans in town had an issue with so many armed Mexicans, and with Crimcow for acting as an interpreter for the court. Crimcow headed for the saloon next to the courthouse after the proceedings to retrieve his guns and ended up in an argument with the former city marshal, George Campbell. And before long, a drunken Hale had joined in, pulled a gun, and shot Crimcow. Dallas was across the street eating dinner when the shooting started, so he ran out, shot and killed an innocent bystander, killed Hale when he stuck his head out from cover, killed Campbell after he came out from cover and proclaimed that this wasn't his fight, and Crimp Cow died shortly after the gunfight. Dallas may have shot him too for all we know. The gunfight was a big deal across the country until the OK Corral happened in October of that same year. We made a video all about that. It's pretty good. You should check it out. Not long after this, Doc Cummings was killed by Jim Manning and seeing as Manning and his family were locals and Cummings wasn't, he was acquitted. Of course, Dallas had an issue with this, even harassed anyone that had anything to do with the trial, and the town at that point pretty much turned on him. He was respected by the law authorities because he cleaned up the city, but the townspeople were outright afraid of him. See, earlier I kinda sugarcoated things a little bit. When Dallas was drunk, he was an asshole, a bully asshole that was really good with two guns. When he was sober, well, he was an alcoholic, so he wasn't sober, and when Cummings died, he got even worse. He ended up killing seven more people in shootouts, and in May of 1882, the town council voted to fire Dallas as marshal. His reaction was to stand drunkenly before the council, waving his guns around, daring them to try and take them. And he is also quoted as saying, I can straddle every goddamn alderman on this council. He would sober up and resign his job two days later, but hey, it was cool. He got a job as a deputy U.S. Marshal. But Dallas still had an issue with the Mannings. He had a tendency to get drunk and to try to call them out, but knowing that he was much more proficient with his weapons than they were with theirs, they chose not to. And then on September 18th, 1882, Two, the two sides met to try and talk peace, but a fight broke out, mostly caused by Dallas. And it ended with Jim Manning shooting Dallas in the back of the head. 
And that was the end of Dallas Staudenmeyer, lawman, gunslinger, drunken asshole. Hey, if you want to see more short videos on subjects like this, let us know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and hey, why not check out our merch store? Our links are down in the description. We'll see you next time. Pew pew!